Hey guys, it's Julesy and... I'm very excited, damn it, Wesley, to be here on a rainy day with a glass full of champagne and ice. Cheers, my nigga. Mm. You're feeling like uncultured shit. swine today. We drink every time we do this, so like... But you got the ice in here. Also, guys, before the we The champagne get... was warm. Okay, whatever. Before we get started, I need y'all to send a little prayer for Julesy. Uh, today, she decided to go to Panda Express and get a bowl. We don't know what the contents are. We're just going to play. She doesn't have dysentery. Um... First of all, we are not announcing Lime my dietary habits on YouTube. Second of all, <laughs> I have Tea Bubble Tuesdays and that panda. That's why I wasn't free. I'm finna do my kale smoothie and salmon and kale for the rest of the day anyway. And take all my vitamins. If you want to start your cleanse off right. That's what we're here for. Don't be shaking. Don't be if you want to start your cleanse off right, get some Panda Express. Cleaned. I never made that mistake. Was it the orange chicken? It was the orange Ooh, chicken. Jesus. <laughs> all right, so Child's Play is a remake of the... Chucky film, which I didn't even know was originally titled Child's Play because mm -hmm. I am a person who does not enjoy horror films. And so because me and Damn It Wesley have gone upon this venture of reviewing the world of very bad horror films. Whoa. It started out it started out with very, very well crafted crafted masterpieces of horror films that you were shitting on. And now you're seeing why I stand by Jordan Peele and his renaissance. A black horror. It's such a, it's such a <laughs> it's such a like below barometer of like excellence in this genre. Wow. And the whole reason this started was because I did not like get out. Was the second movie called Up or something? Us. Us. Up. Was the, up was the Pixar. The disrespect. Okay. <laughs> With the balloons. Us. Up was a great movie. Us, however, was it was a good movie. Us was a good movie. <laughs> <laughs> With, with plot holes and my point was that a lot of the storyline I took like the plot holes in the storyline and the continuity I took issue with mm -hmm. and to Wesley's point was that the genre of horror film is built on the idea of ridiculousness yes did I quote that right yes <laughs> okay I did good yes and and from Child's Play the original and the remake seeing how fucking ridiculous and so since then so as a person who never before, and I guess this is a this is actually a nod to the to the power of Jordan Peele is that prior to this whole foray, I was not a person who would, you could ever convince to sit down and watch a horror film, and so I have now since watched Candyman. Right. What did we last review? Uh, we did Striking Back Reason. That wasn't hard though. What was the last movie we last reviewed? Uh, uh, Ma. Okay, Ma. Which. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And then I went to the theater to see this child's play, which I would never do, go to the theater. Because, <laughs> like, I can put it on the TV. I can watch something on Netflix or on TV and, like, get up and multitask. Like, oh, they're cutting off one. Okay, time to take the trash out. Mm -hmm. is, that, is that why you be saying, like, you about to say, what did you go see the other night when I saw you? You was like, oh, you went to go see uh Oh, so, well, no, listen. I went to go see Miss Summer the other night, right? Was that good? Should I go see that? Should you review that? So here's the thing. I went to go see Midsummer, and I got to like the last 20 minutes of the movie and the fucking film broke, right? I was thinking that Ari Asher was pulling like this really cool like silence thing to build attention and some white lady in the theater just screams out, this is the same shit that happened last night. <laughs> Mind you, it's maybe like four white people Did and everybody else is black. It? Man, yeah, yeah, we got a refund from that shit, and they gave us free tickets. What's Miss? I don't. I have to look that up later and decide if I want to see it or not. I mean, it's, so essentially, there's a young lady, and uh, we ain't got to talk because we need to get it. We about twenty minutes in, and ain't even talk about child's play. Yet. Hey, it's been twenty minutes. It's been about ten, but let's okay, just cool. get into a child's play. Um, and so then I had to come home after watching this version, the 2019 version of child's play, and watch the original Chucky, which I didn't even really know. I didn't realize that it was called child's play. I was just mm -hmm. it was. I thought it was, the movie was Chucky. So, funny story. So, the guy that made the Child's Play movie, the original and stuff, um, he made it under like a partnership agreement, right? So, I think Universal Studios owned the rights to the name Child's Play, but he owned the rights to the character Chucky. Mm -hmm. So, after a couple of years, that's when like The Bride of Chucky, The Seed of Chucky, all those Chucky comedy movies, he was directing those, right? And he's still making Chucky movies, but Universal still has ownership of Child's Play. So, now it's Two franchises with the same characters going on at the same time. Oh. Because law and movies are The weird. world of horror films is very wacky. All right, so this version of Tiles Play is an updated version of the original Chucky movie. It, I largely was 
really only interested in watching this and possibly reviewing it because Brian Tyree Henry is an amazing actor and I love him as on Donald Glover's Atlanta. And I love how sassy that nigga is in real life, but he plays the shit out of a bug <laughs> ass Atlanta nigga. <laughs> oh, right. So he plays the detective. Now, if you have seen, I, I would absolutely say if you have seen this movie to go and watch the original, but I guess I'm probably one of the five or ten people who has not seen the original Chucky because it was a very, very popular movie. And I don't want to get too much into like what this movie is actually about because I feel like it follows enough of the same storyline as the original Child's Play. But the actual, my actual critique of this movie is that it was just, it didn't make sense. <laughs> And I feel like I said this about every film we have now reviewed, but this was just like the whole setup of it didn't make sense. And so when I went back and watched the original, I was like, well, why'd they deviate so much? Why'd they change the recipe? It didn't make sense. And that's my biggest issue is that this movie didn't make sense. And it had a storyline that was still ridiculous, but much more congruent that would have made this a lot more palatable I guess like I didn't understand like even the whole setup okay so what's Brian Tyree Henry's character was Detective Mike yeah and so I'm watching the movie and I'm just like well why why is this nigga just talking to a white boy in the hallway going to his mom's house every night for dinner so his all right so Brian Tyree's character was supposed to I guess parallel the relationship of our protagonist right so Mike is a older guy who is still you know very much a child to his mother right he really hasn't grown up in his mother's eyes despite the fact that he's like a six foot tall detective okay so they're supposed to be like parallels you would make a really great hotel because you can really find depth in anything i mean you know story story because like what <laughs> I, mean, the, I, I didn't get all that from the, like there was supposed to be some parallel about this nigga being I a mean, child i mean yeah well his like his mom is babying him even as he is like this grown-ass man a detective i just thought she was I just thought the insertion of that character, like that character arc, felt unnatural to where the, the space and time of the movie. I mean, it felt natural to me because I'm a black man. My mom would still be like, uh, you going to come home and eat? Um, yeah, that, that I got. But the kind of jumping in of like how he, like the fact that that, that relationship went anywhere between Mike and Andy was kind of like less authentic than the original where the detective mm -hmm. is responding to a crime that happens in Andy's house. Okay, so let's and pause. And that's how he meets the mother. Okay, so let's pause. For those of you that have not watched the original and do not pan on playing pain to see the remake and stuff, the movies are pretty much the same except for a small detail. So in the original... No, no, no. They're, they're huge details. I'm right. There are a couple of details. But the main thing that's different is... In the original Child's Play, right, there's a kid named Andy. His mom buys him a doll. The doll is possessed by a serial killer named Charles Lee Ray. Charles so, just so happened to have a friend that did voodoo. And before he dies, after getting into the gunfight with a police officer in a toy store, he says this little enchantment and his soul goes into a doll and that dog is sold to Andy. So Charles wants to take Andy's body because he needs to be human and shit so he can start doing serial killer shit. So that whole movie is basically this five-year-old kid talking to a doll and the doll's getting him to do bad things and the detective that was after the the, the white boy with the voodoo <laughs> is the same detective that ends up that is essentially the character that brian tyree is playing currently except for in the remake they get rid of the what would you call that the magical the, the supernatural element. The, they get rid of the supernatural element which to me made a lot more sense for where the movie was still gonna go anyway and turned it into a guy in Vietnam who was making the doll is getting <laughs> getting fired and he's like you know he's like slave laborer or whatever and he puts and starts a chip into the back of the Chucky doll and takes off all of its like inhibitors yeah I was gonna say boundaries but inhibitors is a better word yeah. so now you know Chucky can curse he can fight yeah can so but so now Chucky is picking up violent behavior from everyday action so from like seeing the news and hearing about someone being stabbed or seeing Andy like put the knife in the cutting board he's like ah, ah, ah. 
you know, it's, it's <laughs> it just doesn't make sense. And I guess it's, it's, I think this wanted to make a point about how much technology has consumed our life right. and how much we allow these big tech companies to come in to your home. And, into your home. Into, Cause like the company that makes the doll and the current one is what, Kaplan? It's basically Amazon. Kaplan. It's basically an Amazon company and there's Kaplan cars, there's Kaplan like, you know, like your Alexa or your Google yeah. Homes and all that stuff. The Chucky dolls can control all those all features. those products. So when Chucky goes haywire and imprints onto Andy and wants to make Andy as happy as possible, he just starts murdering people via Castling products to make his owner happy or to defend his own. Yeah, really like know. so in this current one, the the doll is doing all this violent stuff. <laughs> because Andy and stuff, right? But, but like all Andy, like your your standard like upset eleven year old, right? Like yeah, your you, your standard white and, kid preteen. Yeah, he's just like, wow, this person is so mean, and then the doll goes and kills this person. Like not only does a doll kill this person, mm-hmm. but they like scalp their face and then bring it to Andy and be like, Andy, you should be so happy. I'm your best <laughs> friend. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> It was just dumb. It was really dumb. And so, my biggest issue, though, and this is this is going to be purely a contest between the original and, and the remake, the doll. Mm-hmm. Before we even get to the like, the whole plot line is dumb in this current one, right? But I get the commentary they're trying to make, right? The anime objects have more control over us. Get it, got one. it, noted. It was so on the nose. Right. Felt it, all right. Cool. But why the doll had to be so ugly? Like, ha- first of all, the original style play came out in <laughs> 1988, all right? Mm-hmm. The special effects in the original are better, better than the special effects in the 2019 version. And that bothered me. Like, the <laughs> doll looks evil. The original Chucky doll did not look evil. It looked like a cabbage patch mm-hmm. with some funky hair. But back in the 80s, dolls just had funky hair. Everybody had funky hair. It was the 80s. The doll looked more like a doll that kids would attach themselves to and be intrigued by. This doll looks sinister and evil. And then, Mm -hmm. because they're trying to make all this commentary on technology, the doll seemingly has power over all the technology. In your house. That's connected. And in the toy store. And it's just chopping niggas up, slicing necks, cutting off limbs. Chucky uses some drones in the store to uh, mutilate a bunch of patrons. In the store. That's when we first saw uh, Brian died the first time. Yeah. I'm still mad about his mama, to be honest. <laughs> I'm mad about the mama. Don't trust these self driving cars. I, I don't fucking gonna spoil it. This is a spoiler. Yeah. His mama dies, and I'm pissed. Because it was just so unnecessary. He puts his mother... And, like, if the whole idea... <laughs> if the whole... And, like, it was, like, you know, the gun and the loaded gun in the drawer was Chekhov's gun. Is that the theory? That yeah. The kind of, Okay. The, like, it, it was, like, let's zoom into the gun in the drawer and tell you what's fitting to happen. So, Brian Tyree... I got his nigga whole name. I'm probably not even saying it right. Is talking to his mama, and she's like, oh, I'm just going to get a casting car... And because they're self driving, I'm gonna take it to bingo. The new Ubers are coming out, right? They're self driving in 2020, so be scared. Cool story, bro. And so she gets <laughs> in this self driving car, and then Chucky magically has a little finger literally that controls all this shit. I mean, well, you know, he's an Amazon product and he's linked up to all that shit, and he can do what he wants. So he kills the, the mom because and she's friends with Andy. Yes. Because she is nice and Andy loves her. And he's like, I can be your only friend. He's jealous. He kills her and I'm I was hot. <laughs> she should have jumped out the car. I, that He kept locking the door, she couldn't get out. And then how did he get in the car? Was he in the car the whole time? No, he was outside the car. But then at the end when he kills her, he's in the car. He a robot, he can do what he wants. You see, we didn't So here's my thing, right? It's hard to compete with the originals and stuff. Everybody was doing fucking coke in the 80s. It was wild ideas. And when you have practical effects, you have to get really creative about how you do things, right? So the original story, no matter how ridiculous it is, makes a little bit of sense, right? Despite the magical elements, there's a serial killer who wants to take over the ch- this child's body and stuff, But I right? think if we're going to... I'm okay with the fact that horror film is fantastical. Yes! 
the element of fantasticalness, we just make it up new words as we go along here, doesn't bother me. Okay. So I can deal with a, a serial <laughs> killer soul getting into the body of a toy and then that's why they're violent because I mean, it's this one toy. Depending on where you're at in the South, this this can really happen because you go to places place Louisiana, I'm not touching We ain't got to be in Louisiana. We, 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 nigga, you from South Carolina, the Geechee folk right there, right? I ain't touching certain shit in Charleston. Neither. Okay, we get it. So like the idea, there are plenty. I would knock that idea because I, I think I can respect, I respect the idea of like voodoo and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. and so the, super, the, the idea of like a supernatural reason for this doll being violent makes sense right. the idea that a doll is learning violent behavior <laughs> and then therefore <laughs> being so tactical with their violence it was, it was a little bit like you said it was a little bit too on the nose but also i, I feel like they kind of like blew the load a little too quickly and stuff right they had an opportunity to maybe take like a poltergeist situation where chucky was just turning shit on and off in the house and manipulating Andy via media since the niggas attached to the fucking internet. That would have been an interesting story for him to convince like an 11 or 12 year old boy to do like some really, really violent white 12 year old boy shit. Now, that would have been a nice spin, but they wanted to try to remake a movie and take the soul out of it, literally. You know, they did, and I'm kind of surprised that Brian read the script and was like, Yes, I want to sign on for this. Brian needs that check. Horror movies are cheap to make and they pay well for the actors. They're just not, it wasn't good. It wasn't. It the, was, doll, the, the doll looked ridiculous. So, this mom gets the doll because the doll was returned. Because the mom, it's, another it's mom was like, The eyes are turning red. Bitch, why are you buying? <laughs> like, the other mama told you what was, and you're like, Oh, yes, my son is obsessed. Now, in the original, the son is. I feel like one of the son is younger. He is younger. The, the son's like five years old in the original. So and it's a lot more realistic that a five year old will be attacked. Like, and I think the the original is a is a comment on consumerism, mm -hmm. which can still be had. The way we feed into branding because the little kid's walking around in the same outfit as Chucky, and his mom buys this particular doll from a crackhead in the alleyway. Yeah. Sounds wild, but it makes way more sense. I mean, right? no, I mean, these things happen because people was buying uh, fucking uh, tickle me Elmos right. from junkies and shit back in the day. So we get it. Yeah, and so she far brings that home to her child, and the doll immediately starts because it's literally in it's. It's a person. Yes. It's a natural person. And then in the end, in order to get to re to break the curse, right, and not become the doll mm -hmm. permanently, he needs to get into the body of the first person who saw him, which would then be the young Andy. Right. And so he goes back to the house, and that's how the whole kind of thing combusts and it comes to an end. Versus here, this nigga just killing everybody. Right. He just pew pew pew. I'm gonna get the other gets the other toys. Like gets somehow, even though they all have inhibitors in them turns the teddy bears to evil and gets them to run after other people and murder them. And I, that one, I just was, I was over it. Yeah, they, it, it was, they, they were doing too much. Uh, yeah, they got too excited. They could have kept the story like nice and simple. Stars, how many stars are we getting this? I guess. Two. Two, yeah, I guess two. And I'm gonna give the original a four out of five. I actually enjoyed the original a lot. Chucky be talking mad and shit I and know, it's entertaining. Maybe I enjoyed the original because I didn't have to, I wasn't committed to sitting in front of it when the gory shit happened. Right. But it was like, oh, okay. Well, I get what's happening here. Like, I'm not, first of all, the, do the doll was a lot more believable as a doll. It, well, the doll actually had personality. And it's like, you can you can see why people like Chucky as a horror. Yeah. I'm like, he talked mad shit. He's yeah, funny. And it's like a little doll and it's cute and it's adorable. <laughs> but he murdered. Yeah, but he's like, oh, I want to murder you. <laughs> Andy, Andy, you know, like I, I, I fucked with it, right? I liked it, and it was very, and I felt like there was some congruency to like Candyman, because I was saying in the original, mm. but, so it, you know, some I don't know, is it a problematic element? The voodoo guy in the original can in the original Child's Play is the only black character in the whole movie. Yeah, it's nineteen eighty. Why is all this stuff happening in Chicago? That's what black people are in 1988. But like, I'm saying to my point, in 1988 in Chicago, and the only black person they feature is a voodoo guy. I mean, Chicago was also. And is it Candyman? Candyman takes place in Chicago. Cabrini Green. Is the first one or second? One? Yeah, yeah, it does take place in Chicago. In Chicago, and the voodoo guy looks like the Candyman. It's good. I'm not gonna lie. I was gonna say it's because they tall and black, but they do kind of favor. But it's not Tony. It, so, they, yeah. they look. They look. They, they look think. similar. They do. I'm not bugging. I'm not one of the people that thinks all white people look alike. I know better. They do look similar, and I felt like there was some congruency 
between Candyman and the way that went as a horror film mm-hmm. and this child's play. Y'all, Julie said it right here. The Candyman Child's Play universe are connected. They won. They're, they're, yo, I have some theories, bro. Yeah. Like, go ahead. Go down the rabbit hole when you're ready now. One of the funniest deaths in the entire movie is the mom has this asshole boyfriend and then you find out that the douchebag boyfriend is actually married and he says some uh, wild shit to the kid. He says some wild shit to Andy. So, so Chucky's like, I bet I'm about to pull up on you for my nigga. And for whatever reason, this guy goes home to his wife's house and he's taking down the Christmas lights at night in the snow. And he said, no, but okay, let's, let's talk a little bit. Let's, let's wait. I want to be done with the book. Let's do some <laughs> dumb shit. That was the, I'm telling you, the, the, the Chekhov's gun shit just kept popping up in his, because the nigga gets on the motherfucking ladder and says, I should have unplugged these things first. Mm-hmm. So he proceeds to rap. <laughs> The plugged in Christmas lights around his body at night with no other visibility. He falls off the ladder, breaks his legs. Because Chucky comes and like pulls the ladder from underneath him and then runs like they have like a mo they have like a seated lawnmower in yeah, the yeah. or something, turns that shit on and runs it over and it and then scalps it? Yeah, and then Chucky takes the face, wraps it up and leaves it in. Andy's room and then Andy and his he friends he wraps it on top of a watermelon because yeah. somehow this black man this no white no this man white yeah, the white guy had a watermelon patch which I was questioning also it was like, winter time and they live in Evanstown Illinois I guess <laughs> they had a watermelon patch in the drove. winter time Chucky walked back through the mean streets of Chicago with a man's face on with a, a watermelon, watermelon. <laughs> he got on the L train. I don't know. And, and, and left is sitting in Andy's room and then Andy being a child slash preteen is freaking out trying to figure out what to do with the head so he calls his friends over and they wrap it up and it ends up at the black lady's house next door you know the black woman that died because he's friend with, friends with him he gave her a gift of a watermelon he gave a black woman a gift of a watermelon with a face on it it just it was so stupid it, it was dumb the, the movie knows it's dumb they, they, they know it's dumb the movie knows that is dumb. Do you recommend people go watch this movie? I recommend you watch it on bootleg. I recommend that you have yourself a good laugh. Um, I recommend that you go back and you watch the original Child's Play because it is it's actually a good movie. It's a good movie now. Child's Play 2 and 3. I mean, if you want to go that deep, you can, but just the first one. The the first Child's Play is good. It's a solid movie. But this child's play, which is, and it's like, now that we talked about the, now it's just like, I just keep thinking all the points of the story, and I'm like, they are all stupid. Yeah, they're dumb. And I was mad. You know, a lot of people that write these movies, they're writing them for dumb people. So, when you have somebody like Jordan Peele and, and Ari Aster, and I'm trying to think of like any other people that write horror movies that make you think... And they don't give you all no, the you, answers. You be trying to give. You be trying to give Jordan Peele a whole lot of. I give. Credit. I give. I give Jordan Peele credit where it's, shit. Even fucking um Donald Glover. I give him credit where it's due. Cause um in Atlanta the last season they had a whole horror episode about uh that creepy Michael Jackson looking nigga. That shit was hilarious. Okay, yes. Yes. But like you 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 can find depth in anything. All right, Doctor Umar Johnson. Damn it, Wesley. No, Thank you for doing this review with me. Do not compare if me y'all to the enjoyed fake Dr. Umar this Johnson. series, please let us know your thoughts in the Just comments down below. And even if you didn't watch Child's Play, recommend anything you would read. like us to review, and maybe. I will stress myself out again for it because I still don't like horror films. And maybe you should do some investigating to find out where all the money for Dr. Umar's school really went. Get to Julesy, have a get to it. We might even make a documentary about it because that's the <sighs> real horror movie. A black man sneaking into your wallets and into your YouTube and taking all your money and all your children and all y'all white women in the middle of the night because he's stashing them for himself. David Wesley said it. Tell him. Come talk to him. All right, deuces. <laughs> yeah.